Explain why fluorine is more reactive than chlorine. So to answer this question, we need to know where both fluorine and chlorine are in the periodic table. And what we can find is that they're in the halogens, so they're group seven elements, and here's fluorine and here's chlorine. So next we need to know what does reactivity mean? In the case of the halogens, it means their ability to gain electrons. So remember that elements like to have a full outer shell of electrons because that makes them stable, and their reactivity comes from their outer shell electrons and whether they're able to gain, lose, or share them. So remember the metals like to lose electrons, the non-metals like to gain electrons, and some of the non-metals, when they react together, share electrons. So in the case of fluorine and chlorine, we're thinking about their ability to gain electrons. So let's draw the electron configuration of both fluorine and chlorine. So fluorine has an atomic number of 9, so that means it has 9 protons, which is equal to the number of electrons as long as it's not charged, which in this case it isn't. So it has 9 electrons. 2 in the first shell, that's the maximum capacity of the first shell, and 7 in the second shell which is what we're expecting because it's in group 7, so that means we think it's going to have 7 electrons in its outer shell. And then if we look at chlorine, it has an atomic number of 17, so that means again it has 2 electrons in the first shell, 8 in the second shell, so 8 is the maximum capacity of the second shell, 2 plus 8 is 10, so that means it has 7 in the third and outer shell. Again, that's what we're expecting because it's in group 7. So now to understand why fluorine is more reactive than chlorine, we need to know about their ability to gain that electron that they want to complete their outer shell. So there's two reasons. One relates to the distance and one relates to shielding. So if we start with distance, the distance refers to the distance of the nucleus, which we'll imagine is here, to the outer shell electrons. And what that means is that the outer shell electrons are attracted to the protons in the nucleus. So if the nucleus is further from the outer shell electrons, there's less attraction to those protons. So in chlorine, we can see that the outer shell is further from the nucleus. So that means there's less attraction of these outer shell electrons to the nucleus. And so if an electron is to be gained in either fluorine or chlorine, if we look at chlorine first, it's harder for it to be gained because there's less pull to that nucleus because it's further from the nucleus, or the outer shell is further. In fluorine, the outer shell is closer, so there's more pull to that nucleus, or the protons in the nucleus. The second reason is shielding, and shielding comes down to the electron shells in between, or between, the outer shell and the nucleus. So if we look at fluorine first, between the nucleus and the outer shell, there is one shell of electrons. And that one shell shields the protons from the electrons. So essentially, it blocks some of that electrostatic attractive force between the protons and the electrons. In chlorine, there are two shells between the nucleus and the outer shell. So that means there is more shielding. There is more blocking of that electrostatic attractive force of the protons from the electrons. So in fluorine, it's a little bit easier for it to gain that electron because there's less shielding and therefore there's more attractive force to the protons. Whereas in chlorine, there are more shells, so therefore there's more shielding and therefore there are less electrostatic attractive forces um, pulling that one electron we want to gain to the protons in the nucleus. So the reactivity comes down to the distance from the nucleus and the shielding.